Hi guys and welcome to this tutorial where we will be looking at different types of mappings and determining whether they are functions or not. Okay. Now in order for us to determine whether a mapping is a function, we first of all need to understand what a function is. So let's have a look at the definition. Okay, so a function is a mapping or a rule between two sets of elements that takes inputs from the first set to exactly one output of the second set. Now in previous tutorials, we have already defined what a mapping or a rule is between two different sets. In order to understand a function, it's important that we understand the set of possible inputs, otherwise referred to as the domain of a function, and the set of possible outputs, which is otherwise referred to as the range of a function. Okay, so let's use this definition to look at some examples of function. Now, one of the most basic examples of a function is the equation y is equal to x. Now, when determining whether an equation is a function or not, it's often helpful to draw its graph if you can, which will help you to visualize the definition. Okay, now the equation y equals x is indeed a function because for each input, now in this case, the inputs are x values, we get exactly one unique output, which in this case are y values. So the one-to-one -one mapping y equals x is also a function. Now let's have a look at some more examples. The mapping y is equal to one over x, is this a function or not? Now in an equation like this, if the set of possible inputs is not defined, then it's assumed that you can input any real value into x, okay? So x can take the value of any real number. Now by definition, we're told that a function takes all the inputs and it maps each input to exactly one output, okay? Now what happens when we input a value of x is equal to zero? Well, we get y is equal to one divided by zero which is undefined, we get a math error if you type that into your calculator. So this doesn't satisfy the definition of a function because not all values of x give us a defined and unique output. So therefore, this is not a function. Now let's have a look at this example. Now in this example, we have the same mapping as before, y is equal to one over x, but the set of possible inputs otherwise known as the domain is restricted such that x can take any real value apart from zero. And that's illustrated by this vertical asymptote on this graph. Now in this case, we can say that the mapping is indeed a function because every possible value of x we input into this equation gives us exactly one unique output of y which you can see by the mappings in this graph. So by restricting the domain of a mapping, you can sometimes make a mapping a function. All right, let's have a look at the next example. Is the mapping y is equal to the square root of x a function or not? Now by drawing the graph of this equation, you should be able to see that there is a mapping from one input in the set of x's to two different outputs in the set of y values. Now remembering that a function takes each input from one set to exactly one output in another set, this mapping clearly doesn't satisfy the definition of a function. Therefore, it's not a function. So all you need to do is find one instance where the definition of a function is not satisfied to be able to verify that a mapping is not a function. And here we've shown it graphically, but do bear in mind that you could also show this numerically. Say for example, we subbed in a value of x is equal to four into this equation. Well, the square root of four is equal to plus or minus two. Okay, so that's a numerical way of showing that one input maps to two different outputs and therefore is not a function. Now in a previous tutorial, we were able to show using the vertical line test that this is a one-to-many mapping. And it's an important fact to know that all one-to-many mappings are not functions. Let's have a look at the next example. Here we have the same mapping as before, 
but this time the set of possible inputs, otherwise known as the domain, has been restricted for all values greater than or equal to zero. Now this is indeed a function because for each input, we get exactly one output as illustrated on the graph. So this is another example to show that by restricting the domain, you can convert a mapping into a function. And in fact, by restricting the domain, we've managed to convert a one-to-many mapping to a one-to-one -one mapping, which you can verify by using the horizontal line test. And so, so far we've seen that the mappings that we can call functions are one-to-one -one mappings. Let's have a look at the next example. Here we have the equation y is equal to x squared, which we've already seen is a many to one mapping, okay? Now this is indeed a function because all our inputs give us a defined output and the graph shows that each input of x maps to exactly one unique output of y, okay? So although there are cases where different inputs of x map to the same output of y, it still satisfies this definition of a function because as long as one value of x maps to one value of y and no more than one value of y, then this definition is still satisfied even if we get two different values of x mapping to the same value of y, okay? So this is an example of a many to one mapping which is indeed a function. Let's have a look at the last example. Here we have the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 25, which represents the equation of a circle centered at the origin with a radius of five units. Is this mapping a function? Well, this mapping is not a function because we can again find an instance where one input of x maps to two different outputs of y, which doesn't satisfy the definition of a function. Now, as we saw in a previous tutorial, the equation of any type of circle or ellipse is classed as a many-to-many -many mapping and it's general that any many-to-many -many mapping is not a function. Okay? Now in all these examples you can see that these are all different types of mappings, some of which are functions, some of which are not functions. And this is why we say that all functions are mappings but not all mappings are functions. All right. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. In the next tutorial, we'll be taking a deeper look into one-to-one -one mappings. Until then, keep up the good work and I'll see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.